Oops, here we go. Okay, so okay? it's my Nodi gang who's showing up here. Uh, like just like here, that. Uh, you nailed some, it. Uh, so let me just do a little tweet here. Uh, hearing, hearing, 16, uh, hearing live. I'll start with live. Uh, hearing 16 pitches from founders. Join us. Jason, would you mind in that putting 12, the 12-week 12 founder you, if you're going to make a distinction? We have our two-day founder you coming up on Monday and Tuesday, and I just don't want people to be confused, okay, yeah. <laughs> if you would mind mentioning that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so what you're going to see today is a collection of companies from Founder University. This is a program we started years ago, and we have two different versions of it. We have an intensive, which is two days. And we do that a couple of times a year. It's a way for us to meet founders where they are, starting their companies, uh, just getting started. Maybe they've got a product with a couple of customers. And we decided we would start something that was even a little bit earlier. And we call that our Founder University 12-week course. The 12-week course is free. Uh, and we have uh, 100 people came to the first one, which we just completed. And 16 of the companies are going to present now. So. Founder University Intensive, the two-day, you kind of have to have a company already, product uh, already in market or in beta. Founder University, the 12-week course, you can have an idea. You could have some skills. You could be looking for a co-founder. So a little bit earlier, and we like to meet people early and often so that we can place the first check into their company. Charlie is uh, the director of Founder University, and Jackie is the co-founder of it with me. Uh, say hi, Jackie. Jackie also runs uh, the Accelerator. So if you think about our funnel, we have a podcast called This Week in Startups. People watch it. They get inspired. They get informed. And then, uh, and Molly is here, my co-host. She'll wave. Okay. Uh, and uh, then maybe people come to Founder University or the Accelerator, and then maybe we syndicate them at thesyndicate.com, uh, thesyndicate.com. And that helps us build a 1% to 15% ownership position as investors. That's important. And we build a nice ownership position in the big winners so that we can make money and pay the staff and uh, then have more money to invest in startups down the road. So Charlie, let's get started. We're going to see five companies in a row, two minutes each. I'm going to ask Jackie um, and I'm going to ask- so Molly and Mike. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask Jackie, Molly and Mike and myself to each pick their number one in each cohort. And the number one is the one they think is got the greatest chance. This is the lens I'd like you, uh, the four of us to look at it through of getting into our accelerator and then eventually getting a seed round completed. So those two things, being able to get into an accelerator, hopefully ours, but it could be any, and then eventually raise a seed round of a million dollars. So that's kind of the idea. Who's ready for that seed round or accelerator check? Are we ready, Charlie? We are ready. Let's Seth rip with through gifting. It. Five in a row. What's that? Seth with gifting is up first here. Oh, Seth with gifting. Okay. I thought you were offering me a gift. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Three, two minutes on the clock here. Two, go. Hi, I'm Seth Brown and my company is Gifting. Gifting is an on-demand gift-giving marketplace. Meet Alex. Alex lives in New York and just remember today's her brother's birthday. But Brett lives in Florida, so what can she get him and will it even arrive in time? Luckily for Alex, there's Gifting. Let's see how it works. Alex enters in Brett's interests. He loves music and electronics. From there, our machine learning algorithm analyzes his interests and provides a single curated list of items available in his area. Had Brett been a gifting customer, Alex would have seen his wish list pop up when searching for recommendations. Each gifting order is accompanied by a digital card or premium video message, which we believe is a real game changer. And to top it off, all this can be delivered in as little as two hours. As for Brett's gift, that's accompanied with a text message containing his personalized greeting, similar to the email that some members of the lunch team just received. Brett can confirm his delivery or reschedule, leaving them both happy customers. I conducted research with over 2,500 consumers like Alex and compared it to the competitive landscape. We found there really wasn't an app that checked all the boxes until now. Our go-to-market strategy includes a localized consumer campaign, retail partnerships targeting inventory from over 800 brick-and-mortar stores in our launch market of South Florida, a product built for expansion and made operational by farming out our deliveries. We built a pre-launch community of over 11,000 members. Once launched, we'll focus on our 2x growth model, where we'll incentivize every gifting recipient like Brett to becoming a gifting customer like Alex. We're targeting an AIR of 10 million in 2024 and 100 million by the end of 2025. 
Traditional gift giving costs $20, can take 43 minutes, and not knowing what to get could be frustrating. With gifting, you can save close to 20%. It could be done in a fraction of the time with access to personalized gift recommendations. Our team has experienced growing companies from startup through exit, resulting in combined sales of nearly $6 billion. Gifting is an on-demand gift-giving marketplace. We obsess over delivering the perfect gift so you don't have to. Thank you. Nice work, Seth. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing your screen. We'll move on to Teresa. All right, we can see it. Can't hear you yet. Perfect. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. I got two minutes on the clock, Teresa. Ready? Go. Perfect. Hi, I'm Teresa. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Chuyu. We personalize and digitize breathing training to help people live longer and better. Breathing is the foundation of life, and we do it more than 20,000 times a day. Yet 9 out of 10 people do it wrongly, and this can lead to deadly chronic diseases, the number one cause of death worldwide, lost years of life, and for companies, financial losses of millions of US dollars per year. That's how we developed a personalized and digital training as a solution. Let me show you how this works. At the bottom of the screen, people get a prompt to inhale or exhale. That's the breathing training part. They then blow onto the microphone of the smartphone or headset. When they follow the rhythm correctly, they steer the object on the screen in real time. They're literally blowing up a balloon. We offer this as holistic breathing training to businesses. We integrate the training into the browser. We have an analytics dashboard. We offer coaching and webinars. And people can train their breath anytime and anywhere because we also have a mobile app. We compete with expensive hardware-based breathing devices, human analog, not scalable breathing trainers, and existing meditation and lifestyle apps where there's either no clear breathing focus or no real-time interaction with the user. To show your breathing training however works because it's sticky, it's fun, with literally millions of ways of doing the breathing animation. We don't need any additional hardware, just a regular smartphone or headset is enough. And last but not least, it functions, it works. It's based on more than five years of research at leading universities like MIT or ETH Zurich. We follow a bottom-up B2B sales model, where we charge private customers $5 per month and business customers $10 US per month. We focus on B2B clients first and plan to have a revenue of $50 million by the end of 2025. We currently have 250 beta testers for the B2C app, and we have acquired our first B2B client, a corporate uh, in global insurance company, where we will integrate into their corporate uh, wellness platform. They already have a million active users there. We have further in advanced negotiations with another global insurance company. A potential other client of ours says that our breathing training is so easy and fun, it's like Candy Crush for health. Us, that's me. I did my PhD at ETH Zurich and MIT in digital health. David, who worked for top tier strategy consulting and fitness startups, and our CTO, Stefan, who did his PhD at ETH Zurich in machine learning and quantum chemistry. Thank you for your attention. We assure you and we digitize and personalize breathing training. Excellent. Nice job, Teresa. Uh, Harry, why don't you go ahead and share your screen? You're up next. All right. All right. We can hear you. You're full screen. I have two minutes on the clock. Ready? Hi everyone, I'm Harry, founder of Taco, an AI conversation hub that manages all of the professional communications in one place. Meet Joey. Joey is a VC who plays different roles. Joey needs to juggle between Gmail, Slack, and LinkedIn on a daily basis. All Joey wants is a single interface that consolidates all of the messages in one place. And now with Taco, he can. Joey simply uses one tap to connect any account from any platform. He can then customize the connection details. Taco will then spin up an NLP model in the back end to figure out what's important. Joey can then directly reply within the app or go straight to the specific Gmail or Slack. Taco then plans everything on a trackable list. Joey's time and mine are saved. We are a consumer subscription model and we charge $10 per month. Two weeks ago, we launched our private beta and now we have 150 users with 100% week over week growth while spending $0 on marketing. We've received positive feedback on our AI algorithm, unique product positioning, and also our UI. We outcompete power products like Superhuman by integrating with more platforms, and we outcompete all in one chats by having an AI driven backend. We've been growing from free, high converting channels. These channels drive organic word of mouth growth. We've also been growing our brand and community awareness by issuing membership NFTs. This year, we plan to penetrate the entrepreneur group and grow our MAU to 100,000. Next year, we'll move to B2B with a product-led growth fashion. And we are the team to do this. I ran into the problem firsthand when I was studying AI and LP at U Chicago. My co-founder has a background of building consumer-facing tech product at Amazon. And once again, I'm Harry. This is Taco, your AI conversation hub. Thank you. Excellent job, Harry. You want to go ahead and stop sharing your screen?
we'll shift to Tracy with term payments. Hello. Hey, Tracy, we can hear you. Great. And I am sharing my screen now. All right, we can see it. And I got two minutes on the clock. Ready, go. Hi, I'm Tracy, the founder of Term Payments, the payment processor that allows a customer to shop online and pay in person. Because people like Ari don't trust websites with his card information or only has cash, but with Term, he can select to pay in person and receive a QR code by email or text with a link to a map that shows the closest payment location to complete his purchase. Term makes money by charging a vendors 3.6% to process payments and a one third split of the collection fee with physical locations. But we also give customers the option to have the full term payments app with additional features for our annual membership of $28. With strategic partners like Stripe, Spare Cash and Green Dot, Term will soon be able to serve our wait list of over 200 shopping customers and 17 e-commerce stores, online marketplaces and SaaS technology companies registered and waiting on standby to use Term as their payment processor. Our closest competition is eBanks, PaySafe, Cash App, and Amazon. eBanks and PaySafe are outside the U.S., collecting over $1 billion in annual in-person cash payments, and the U.S. companies are racing to develop and launch. These companies are great, but term payments can beat them to market by introducing ourselves to our customers where they are with posters at grocery stores, check cashing centers, billboards at bus stops and train stations, and social media outlets. We may be starting as a payment button on e-commerce websites, but we'll grow to process payments for utilities, school tuition, vacations, and even mortgages. Because in the US, 35% of all transactions are still done in cash. And when you expand to the rest of the world, that number jumps to over 80%, making it a trillion dollar opportunity. To reach our first milestone of 10 billion in annual revenue, we need to process approximately one and a half million dollars per day. And to get to 100 million in annual revenue, we have to process almost $9 million per day. Our team is made up of seasoned veterans of retail management, corporate sales, logistics, and operations and software engineering. Term is the bridge that connects the digital and physical payments world. Thank you. Awesome job, Tracy. Thank you. And we'll go one more for this first group of five, uh, Chase. You want to go ahead and share your screen? Excellent. It's all good. We can see it and we can hear you. Two minutes is on the clock. Ready? Go. Hi, I'm Chase, founder of Fixed Six. We're measuring the world's carbon to bring more people into the carbon economy. People like Jesus, who wants to bring his reforestation projects to a carbon offset marketplace. In order to do this, he needs a measurement, reporting, and verification solution. Currently, the cost of these solutions limit the number and types of projects that he can start. Fix6 offers an affordable and scalable solution to this problem. To work with us, Jesus just uploads the geometry of the project. We then go and gather years worth of satellite data to train a scientific model, which calculates the water, energy, and carbon budget of his land. We use this model to measure carbon sequestration, which is then reported to carbon offset marketplaces, allowing Jesus access to the capital that he needs. We currently have two customers and unpaid pilots with more in the pipeline. We're also partnering with carbon offset marketplaces to offer a scalable MRV solution. We have a SaaS model charging per acre per year with many of these projects in multiple years and up to a decade. One thing that sets us apart is a wide number of practices we support by monitoring both forest and crop lands. This allows us to be an MRV provider for nearly every acre of land on the globe. We have seen intense interest from people in the regenerative finance and regenerative agriculture communities, as well as marketplaces looking for a scalable MRV solution. There's also the opportunity to expand into new verticals as more natural capital is backed with monetary capital. The carbon offset markets are expected to at least quadruple by the end of the decade, with each of these tons being backed by an MRV solution. For the land-based practices that Fix6 covers, up to roughly 850 million acres of land will be put in practice by the end of this decade. That represents an $850 million TAM at our dollar per acre pricing. The team is me at the moment, but we have a unique advantage since I have a PhD in peer reviewed research in creating scalable solutions for measuring carbon and water budgets. Because of this, we're positioning Fix6 to get more people into the carbon economy by measuring the world's carbon. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Chase. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing your screen. Jason, there's your first group of five. Very strong presentations, all uh, seemingly real businesses that customers uh, could be delighted uh, by and spend money with. To recap uh, for Jackie, Mike, and uh, Molly, 
We have Company One Gifting. It's an app that lets uh, gift givers quickly send memorable gifts on demand. Uh, company Two, Choju, is a breathing app uh, that uh, competes with Calm, Apple Watch, and some other services. $10 per user in the enterprise to help you uh, learn to breathe better and reduce stress. Company Three, Taco. Uh, which is an AI conversation hub that consolidates your Slack, LinkedIn, and other messaging platforms into one app, uh, uh, ostensibly so you could triage it better, I think, uh, with some AI doing something in the back end. I wasn't clear on that. 150 users in beta. And then you have term payments, which allows you to shop online, pay in person uh, with a membership fee of $20 and some service fees. The audience for this, I believe, would be the unbanked. Uh, and company five, fix six, uh, which is measuring the world's carbon footprints by analyzing land, I think using computer vision uh, to figure out its carbon footprint costs a dollar an acre. And uh, I think MRV stands for measurement reporting and verification. So I'll start with you, uh, Jackie. When you look at these uh, five companies, which one stands out to you that if it was in the accelerator, uh, investors would want to take a follow-up meeting and then subsequently would have the best chance at raising that million dollar seed round? Which one. I, I can only pick one. <laughs> only pick one, but you can oh, take us through a dog process of your top two strong, or three. Such a strong cohort. Oh my gosh. Um, you can tell us right. your, the two or three you're particularly, okay. you're narrowed it down to, and then which one sure. is the best and why. Sure, sure, sure. So um, I think if I were to do a one, uh, two, three, can I do three? Um, backwards, well, let's see. So uh, I'll do, I'll do two. Okay. So for me, second, sure, let's, would, all would do you, two. let's do sure. two. Let's do two. Okay. Let's so two. thank you. Um, you can't all just do all one. All. You can't yeah, just do hard. one. <laughs> so two for me would be uh, fix six. Um, mm -hmm. It's such an important issue. You know, right. it's just, uh, and I love this, this angle on it. Mm -hmm. um, and my one would be taco um, because, you know, it, it's such a, cool space. Um, and there are so many tools now and no one's really figured out how to consolidate all these platforms. So um, we would love to dive into that product a bit more. Mike, which one do you think could get a million dollar seed round after going through an accelerator? So my two favorites in this cohort were Shoju and term payments. I think for me, the number one was term payments. I think she's identified a very, very interesting space that quite frankly, I was not aware of be fascinating to dig into that deep deeper and i think for us um you know fintech is a big focus shoju is in the consumer space which is also an area for us so i think both of those would be the winners for the uh, accelerator okay uh, which one is your number one you said term payments yeah okay and molly if you looked at these two based on your tremendous knowledge of the technology industry and your growing knowledge of investing which two um, i have a feeling i know which one you like best personally I mean, I think you think I know, you know, but you don't. Number oh, two okay. for me is is Choju, actually, okay. um, particular because you're in talks with a global insurance company. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity there for businesses who are investing in wellness for lots of reasons. But number one for me is term payments. I do think that that identifies a real need. And also that Tracy did such a great job of exactly at the point when I was thinking, wait, do people really want this? Of saying people really want this. And here's why. Great. And then for me, I went, um, again, not my personal feelings, but what I think would clear market with investors in the, in the seed community. Um, I think Fix6 would be number one, because it feels like a software platform doing computer visualization. It feels like it's technically sophisticated, which makes it defensible, hard to do, and that there'll be a, a growth market there, kind of like you're skating to where the puck is. And then I struggled with my number two. I think all four of them could have been number two. Uh, but there was something about gifting um, that I felt like the founder understood his market had a, uh, or he or she, I can't remember, uh, but had a level of passion for uh, this idea. And I'm not sure it's polished enough yet, but I could see it getting super polished and taking off in a metropolitan area where people might really value gifting and if it had very unique things. So that would be my number two. I could see it actually working. So great start. One of the interesting things here was you, you saw a different perspectives, right? And so that's one important thing for all founders to understand. You don't have to win over every investor. You need to win over one investor. Let's go to the next five companies. Charlie, great job so far. Yeah, absolutely. Graham, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and we'll jump into remote space. Give me one second. Okay, we can hear you.
Here we go. We can see it. I got two minutes on the clock, Graham. Ready? Go. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Graham Caro, the co-founder and CEO of Remote Space, a shared space for remote teams to talk to whoever, whenever. How does it work? Meet Eva. She's a product manager at Apple. She works in a large organization, uses remote space to remove barriers between cross-functional teams. Today, she has a question for Stella, a software engineer running a sprint, so she joins remote space to ask them. Eva joins... Oh. First, Eva accesses the spaces within our network and specifically the product space. She discovers that Stella is unavailable and she sees Ken and Erica talking already, so she decides to talk to Zane instead. Eva joins this space and drags her avatar over to Zane to start a conversation separate from others in the space and without ever needing to send a calendar invite. She learns from Zane that Sam in marketing really needs her help and asks her to join the marketing space. Eva says sure. Eva accesses the marketing space, joins the space, then moves her avatar over to Sam and solves their problem. Remote space remove barriers for Eva's team and save valuable time when working on their next product release. The business model is freemium SaaS. It starts free for networks up to 10. Paid starts at $10 per user per month and it gets cheaper as the networks get larger. Traction bottom-up customer pipeline is 121 email signups to date with the logos on the right-hand side. No paid customers yet. There are four main competitors in the space, but remote space is uniquely positioned to be professional for enterprise, simple and efficient without distraction, three-step onboarding, and quick navigation to other spaces. Our go-to market is organic network effects, PR engagement, and paid advertising. Our five-year vision is to be the global leader in remote work engagement. And our journey to 100 million ARR is 125,000 paying customers to get to 10 million, and a million and a quarter to get to 100 million. This is our team. I'm the CEO, three-time founder, six years experience in consulting, product and design. Rutan Shrevedi is the CTO, two-time founder, five years experience in software engineering. That is remote space, a shared space for remote teams to talk to whoever, whenever. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. If you want to go ahead and stop sharing your screen. And Regina, if you want to pull up your screen and talk to us about innocuous AI. Sure. Hear me fine? I can see you. I go full screen on that. It's loading. We got it. I have two minutes on the clock. Ready? Go. Hi, I'm Regina, CEO of Innocuous AI. Our mission is to help companies productionize AI faster for less by providing a no-code DevOps as a service platform for AI developers. Meet Joe. He's a data scientist. As a data scientist, Joe is great at building algorithms. Uh-oh. Did we lose you here, Regina? I think a uh, microphone turned off, yeah. Yeah, it looks it like froze. it froze too. Yeah, swap it out. We'll go ahead and have her stop sharing here. I'll try and force it. Um, Quick reboot. Yeah, we'll try and grab her then. Okay, cool. We'll move right on to Andrew. Can you see my screen and hear me okay? I got gotcha, you, and I can see it. I got two minutes on the clock for you, Andrew. Hi, I'm Andrew, founder of Savvy Team, the platform that helps you create career paths and upskilling opportunities for your employees. Meet Ran. She's head of engagement marketing at Airbnb, and she aspires to become a global head of engagement marketing. She's managed by Brian. Brian has a one-on-one -on -one with Ran and then creates a career path for her. In this case, we're going to edit the one that he already started. Uh, it's a typical job description, which allows him to put the required skills, competencies, and outcomes required for that position. And it has a recommendation engine in case he's not sure who to give this path to. Once she's given the path, Rand is able to designate that, her interest towards it for uh, her dream role. From there, she's able to decide, maybe she doesn't want to do that next. She wants to make her next path the National Head of Engagement Marketing, which gives her time to pick up special projects so that she can do a few things. One, prove that she has certain skills. Two, upskill herself so she can be ready for that position. And three, give her and Brian conviction through updates on her progress. We charge $50 a month currently after a five seat trial, but we're planning on quickly switching over to a per user per month subscription. We've already onboarded three companies and they're currently creating ladders for their employees. We have four companies in the queue and a handful of larger companies that we're working through on the pipeline. Two of our companies switched from our biggest competitor, Lattice Grow. The major difference that our customers are seeing is that between us and Lattice Grow is that we actually focus on the person, the employee first, and let them, the employees take control of their own destiny and their careers. We currently are doing cold outreach right now through email and LinkedIn, but I plan on switching over to leaning more into my growth background and trying a lot more different tactics. I'm currently a solo founder. I'm in on deck looking for a co-founder. I founded a company called Someone New, which is in a similar space, and I've led growth for companies like Job Today and Warmly. 
The major thing that's next for us is we're going to start with peer mentorship to help match employees for upskilling and career development, reducing friction so that managers can create paths easier, and going after enterprise customers because they feel this pain the most. We're Savvy Team, the platform that helps you with career paths and upskilling opportunities for employees. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, great job. Monica, you're up next. Thank you, Charlie. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, sharing my screen. Excellent. We can see it. And I have two minutes on the clock. Ready? Go. Great. Hi, I'm Monica with Gaon, which um, helps travelers, which helps people to travel more lightly and sustainably by providing locally sourced clothing for rent at the traveler's destination. We currently um, have beta testers in the Bay Area, and our first trial customers were Becky and Bill, who are um, semi-retired musicians and Airbnb uh, hosts. So with Becky and Bill, we collected their information, their sizing, their preferences, and about five days before they landed in the Bay Area, we um, presented them with some options for their nine days stay. Becky and Bill really enjoyed uh, the service of Gaan, and they shared this uh, picture of, a of some suitcases. They were very happy not to be schlepping themselves. Gaan is a marketplace where we will take care of logistics and cleaning and hold some limited inventory for um, basic capsule clothing, and also sign up boutiques, department stores, brands, and peer-to-peer -peer creators who might have some really unique pieces in their personal collection. We are taking um, some um, waitlist customers, and uh, not all of them currently are traveling to the Bay Area quite yet, and we have one who's upcoming in March. There's, of course, Rent the Runway and a couple of smaller companies that are designed for travels, travelers specifically, um, but none of them source at the local destination. They ship from their headquarters and also currently uh, offer only women's clothing. Uh, our go-to-market plan is to go city by city and actually drill down uh, airport by airport. And here's a quick snapshot of what an opportunity at, at SFO might look like. This is our plan to hopefully crawl, walk, and run to $100 million in annual revenue, which requires about 2,600 daily deliveries. And here I am and um, have um, uh, some co-founders that I am currently recruiting, almost founder official, not, not quite yet. Awesome. Thank you so much, Monica. Great job. And uh, Scott, to go ahead and share your screen here. Are you there, Scott? Hey there. There we yep. go. Okay. Cool. All right. Excellent. Here it comes. I can see it. I can hear you. I have two minutes on the clock. Ready? Go. Hey there. I'm Scott, founder of Timewell, the legacy platform to capture family memories with their voice. You can upload photos or ask a question, then record your loved one's thoughts in their own voice. So meet Jenna. She has a lot of great memories with her dad. And as he ages, Jenna wants him to capture his stories. But the places they store photos don't make this easy. So she chose Timewell because it's super simple and will save stories in his voice. And Jenna now has a single place to save answers to questions and stories behind photos. It helps her whole family get to know him better. And Timewell is a B2C SaaS with three subscription plans and a flexible one-time payment plan, all starting with a 14-day free trial. I launched on January 10th of this year with over 50 people on the early access list, and I have 15 active users with Ford paid accounts. And the consistent feedback is that it's really easy, even for Richard, who is 90 years old. And there are a number of strong legacy platforms already focused on capturing loved one stories. But my ultimate goal is to make it ridiculously easy for people like Jenna to record her dad's voice. And I'm targeting, targeting others like Jenna and her dad. They believe memories are worth saving. And I'm focusing on making collaboration sticky by showing value at life event like a wedding. In the next two years, we focused on distribution and expanding my team and the following years on expanding my platform. The market size is over $30 million. And I'm setting myself apart by focusing on life events and scanning businesses that will channel photos into the TimeWell platform. And the team is me. I have over 15 years experience in design, branding, and photography, and I'm obsessed with creating great product experiences. So thanks for looking at TimeWell, where you can capture family memories with their voice. Excellent. Thanks, Scott. Regina's back. Let's try one more time here, Regina, if you want to try and share now that 
rebooted. Yeah. You hear me fine so far? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you so far. We'll try it one more time. All right. Can I suggest, uh, Regina, why don't you turn your video off? Because um, if you're having a connectivity issue, you'll have more bandwidth if you turn your video off. All right, I will Share do that. Screen. Excellent. We lost your screen in the process though. Okay, no problem. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> I was trying to be helpful. <laughs> and we'll get there. Okay, there we go. Awesome, we can see it. I've got two minutes for you, Regina. Ready, go. Hi, I'm Regina, CEO of Innocuous AI. Our mission is to help companies productionize AI faster for less by providing a no-code DevOps as a service platform for AI developers. Meet Joe, he's a data scientist. As a data scientist, Joe is great at building algorithms. But to build an AI product in the cloud, he has to read through tons of documentation and spend many months figuring out DevOps work. The solution is Innocuous AI, a cloud platform for AI developers wanting to keep a small AI team so it's more manageable, scalable, and affordable. It is easy to use even without going through lots of documentation. It makes it fast and easy to onboard new data scientists. When Joe uses this platform, he can focus on what he loves, which is creating algorithms. With Innocuous Book, Joe can now bring models to production rapidly without the need for a large DevOps team to support him. There are multiple revenue uh, opportunities, and the main one is an upcharge on infrastructure spend. Others include storage fees and more. Each customer represents north of $370,000 in annual revenue. Unlike competitors that can only take in tabular data, Innocuous Book is more flexible as it can take in both structured and unstructured data. The no-code platform makes it effortless to use in comparison to competitors. Our first 10 million will be from well-funded US-based startups building AI products. We scale to 100 million by expanding to larger enterprises incorporating AI into their products. The vision is to ultimately become the next AI-based cloud provider. Right now, we're in private beta with one customer on the free trial that has expressed an interest in a paid pilot. I'm a second time co-founder with two successful exits and over 20 years business experience. My co-founder has over 10 years AI experience and is a thought leader in the data science community. We are Innocuous AI. We help companies improve the time to value for their AI invest investments with our no code DevOps as a service platform for AI developers like Joe. Excellent, thanks Regina. And stop sharing your screen. There's our group of five for you, Jason. Okay, well done. We had remote workspace, an old school palace-like 2D chat space for business. Uh, we had Innocuous AI, which we just heard from a no-code DevOps platform for AI. We had Savvy Team, a SaaS platform that gives people a career path, pick your pa path, prove your skills, upskill yourself. Uh, and then we had Gaan or Gaan, which is to rent local clothes when traveling to a location. You travel lighter because uh, clothes are waiting for you. And then finally, Company 10, uh, and the fifth in this cohort, uh, time well. Capture family memories by adding voice to pictures. Let's go in reverse order. Molly, did you have a uh, favorite two that you think could clear market and raise that million dollar round after going through an accelerator? I just, the lens in which we're looking through it. I just want three. <laughs> I know, that's why it's two. Wow. You can give her, you can give her a honorable mention. All right. You can give uh, three honorable mentions. Honorable mention to go on because I especially like the hyper local part of local clothes rental. My number two is savvy team. I think there is such a use for tracking that specific. You don't, you don't have to rely on just people and their feelings about you. You literally have like milestones on the back end. That's outstanding. Um, and then number one, so glad that Regina recovered. It's innocuous AI for me. That is incredibly complicated and i hope you can actually pull that off but if you can people are going to pay a lot for that okay mikey i think uh you went next so so sure. uh, my two had a common theme i thought both remote space and timewell had really great design i think both products visually looked really interesting um and that stuck out for me but my number one was timewell uh, i just think the market's bigger i would be a little concerned on remote space competing with the slacks and the teams of the world. So time well is the number one and uh, remote space by number two. Great, Jackie. 
Yeah, this is tough. Um, my honorable mention would be innocuous, which I think looks really cool. I didn't quite understand what the product was, so I'd want to dig into that, but um, it looks like it's very cool. Um, and then my two, I'm actually, Mike here, um, same remote space for me was two and Timewell was one. Great. Um, for me, uh, this was a really interesting group, uh, some very creative ideas. I'll give an honorable mention to Gone, which I I found fascinating and scary and creative. Like I'm going to show up somewhere and I'll have no clothes with me. And then maybe I'll have clothes, but it'll be sustainable. Maybe I take some back. I buy them. Anyway, there's something there. And it just, you could tell everybody's attention was like, huh, something interesting there. Um, but my number two uh, was Savvy Team. It does seem like they understand the space and, uh, you know, enterprise is like planting seeds in a farm, you know, and then like, um, you know, building consumer products is like finding a needle in a haystack. It's like really much harder. Um, or finding a truffle maybe would be a really good analogy. <laughs> so like you could be a truffle hunter, not easy, or you could like plant seeds and build enterprise software. So that's my number two. My number one, I was absolutely taken and inspired by Timewell because I just thought, what, why isn't there an audio feature built into all photos where you could give an audio caption? Uh, so I think there's a chance to make a standard here. I think there's a chance to make a new media format. I thought, you know, people on TikTok are doing kind of reaction videos. So maybe you could actually have grandma's camera on, let her talk in, about the photo and who's in it and what happened that day in 1972, and then uh, save it for all time. So I love this archivist kind of thing, uh, or maybe saving it for your kids. Hey, we went skiing this day. I'm going to give this to you on your 21st birthday when I took you skiing when you were five years old. That's immediately what I thought of was like taking some of these photos and putting my memories on it now and then time bombing it to my kids in uh, five years. So just wonderful ideas. So time is my one, Savvy Team's my two. Let's keep the train moving and go to our next six, Charlie. Got it. All right, Angela. And a uh, fair warning to the, uh, to the four of us, I'm going to ask you for your number one and number two overall. Excellent. Angela, we can see it. I don't know if I can hear you yet. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You have two minutes. Ready? Go. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela, and this is Sherlock, a digital wallet that helps you get rewarded for your daily spending. Have you ever been at the cashier, looked at your wallet, and wondered, which card should I use to get the most points and rewards? At Sherlock, we want to solve this problem. We want to help consumers find the best credit cards and optimize their wallets for maximum points and rewards. Sherlock works in four easy steps. First, connect your credit card data to the Sherlock platform to understand trends in your spending. Our AI platform will help match you to the best credit cards to have in your wallet. Add all of your credit cards to the Sherlock digital wallet and use it to pay both in-store and online. Sherlock's algo ensures you get the most points and rewards. Start earning and watch your rewards and savings grow. Sherlock provides value by innovating at the transaction level, helping consumers to earn free money through a smart digital wallet. We are currently building out our MVP and plan to launch in just six months. We plan to make money through credit card referrals, referring customers to credit card companies, and through a subscription fee to use our wallet. Sherlock is automating what credit card hackers do, using data-driven finance to help consumers find the best cards and optimize at the cashier. We are currently building on our waitlist through online communities like credit card churning groups, couponing groups, fire, and financial literacy groups, but in the future plan to do partnerships and SEO. We're targeting profitability by year three, however, that can get accelerated based off of customer acquisition. As a team, we have experience working on digital wallets, open banking, and automated credit algorithms. Thank you. I'm Angela Mascarinas, CEO of Sherlock, a digital wallet helping you get rewarded for your daily spending. Thank you. Nice work, Angela. Thank you so much. Go ahead and stop sharing your screen. And Jacob. Hello. There we go. I can hear you. Awesome. You should be able to share now. I can see it. If you want to go full screen on there, though. Excellent. I got two minutes on the clock for you, Jacob. Ready? Go. Hello, I'm Jacob, and I'm building Butler, the best way to search, save, and share all of your favorite media. Butler is a media search engine, a personal library and note-taking app, and a social media platform for all things entertainment. This is Mick. Mick works in entertainment, 
loves media and is constantly getting recommendations. He's tried writing them down, but notes get lost. And he finds it frustrating looking for that one specific app for books or movies or TV or music or podcasts or games right when he needs it. He uses Butler instead, and let's show you how. Mick listens to the All In podcast, and here's Jason recommend the TV show Succession. He opens Butler and quickly searches and finds it. He saves it with a note to remember what inspired him to watch it and quickly gets back to that pod. The next day, Mick is deciding what to watch. He checks his library and sees Succession. He taps on it and instantly knows why he saved it, who recommended it, where to watch it, and any other information he might want. We plan on incubating this within the niche media communities that live and breathe media to reach more and more people like Mick. Our focus right now is on developing the utility of the app, and we're already starting to see word of mouth start to spread. Other competitors in the space either focus on single media types or have narrow user journeys, which makes it really difficult to find what you need when you need it. Butler does it all. We have a free app on TestFlight right now that you can download today, and we plan on launching a pro version by the end of the year. Here you can see people using our app every single day for the past three months. We have a core group of power users that's constantly growing, and we haven't started our paid marketing campaigns yet. One of our power users is Robbie Fox, a prolific Hollywood screenwriter. He said that as a writer, Butler has been unbelievably helpful to my life on a daily basis. A single place to store all the films I need to see, where to find them, and to be able to add in notes is a tremendous help. Over time, Butler will become a data-driven concierge service for media. If you like this movie and this TV show and this book, we think you'll love this podcast. There's three of us on the team. We have a combined 20 years experience working in the entertainment industry, and two of us have degrees in engineering. We're developers and we're technical founders. Thank you. My name is Jacob and I'm building Butler, the best way to search, save, and share all your favorite media. Awesome. Thank you there, Jacob. Great job. Uh, next up, we have Talisha. That's me. Can hear you, Talisha. Am there I we sharing? go. You're sharing. We see it. I got two minutes on the clock for you. Ready? Go. Hi, my name is Talisha, founder of Fetch, the search engine for shopping. Meet Jessie. She's an avid pageant competitor and fashion influencer. Before Fetch, searching for a gold liquid pageant gown was difficult. It took an entire month, 20 screenshots, seven Facebook posts, hours of typing and retyping keywords, and even a few two-hour appointments at local retailers only to not find what she was looking for and leave feeling frustrated. It's time to stop the shop shopstration. Now, Jesse can search the billions of products from millions of local and e-commerce retailers, get personalized results, and easily check out with one click. She even tracks and manages her orders from multiple retailers in one place, taking that month of research down to a few minutes. At Fetch, we speak Jesse, so we understand her unique style, body type, and budget. Thanks to our suite of retailer tools from visual search to tailored recommendations, Jesse's favorite retailers can speak Jesse too, bringing shopping nirvana right to their site. With a decade of experience in the special occasion industry as a designer, buyer, stylist, and pageant contestant, we see it as our entryway into the global retail market. Recently, we launched our beta and currently have eight users and one pilot retailer on our platform. Fetch is the complete shopping solution from discovery to delivery, focused on the intersection between consumers, retailers, and manufacturers to improve the overall shopping experience. Unlike our competitors, our solution is focused on solving the problem at each level of the supply chain and making shopping easier for all. I am joined today by an amazing team of talented individuals with technical and retail expertise, making us the perfect team to make Fetch happen. We are Fetch the search engine for shopping. Thank you. Excellent job there, Talisha. Next up, we have Toby with Stockbet. All right, all right, all right. All right, Toby, I can hear you. I can see you. I got two minutes on the clock for you. Ready? Go. Awesome. Yo, yo, yo. My name is Toby, and I'm working on Stockbet. We're building a binary options exchange where retail investors can trade directly on market outcomes. So things like, will Tesla go up or down tomorrow? Will Uber go up or down next week? Our goal is to increase retail market participation by giving retail investors a simple and straightforward alternative to complex options derivatives and we replace confusing variables like delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho with simple yes or no propositions instead. Uh, meet Adam. He's a big fan of Netflix, but the recent decline in quality of shows has been really disappointed. Together with increased competition and rising prices, Adam has developed a bearish stance on Netflix. But unfortunately, Adam has no idea how to actually trade and express his views in the markets. Adam has traded options before, but he still doesn't understand how these incredibly complex services work. And Adam is still haunted by that time when he bought puts and the stock did go down, but he actually lost money, all because of random things like data decay and IV crush. 
Luckily, Adam finds out about StockBet, which has been traded directly on market outcomes like whether Netflix will close green or red in February. Adam selects his time frame to be monthly and scrolls down to find Netflix. Right now, the price of each green contract is trading at 65 cents and each red contract is 35 cents. Um, Adam thinks Netflix will have a bad month, so he spends $100 on red, which buys him 266 red contracts. If Netflix stock price were to indeed decline in February, then each one of Adam's red contracts would net him $1 each, turning his initial $100 investment into $266. Alternatively, Adam can also sell his red contracts early before expiry and profit from the difference in prices. Uh, at this point, Adam is crying tears of joy. Finally, a simple and straightforward platform for him to trade and express his views in the markets. All Adam has to do is shoes up or down. Um, we're competing against NetX, an outdated and difficult to use platform that mainly serves institutions and professional active day traders. As such, their most popular offerings are five minute Forex binaries and 20 minute uh, industry binaries. Uh, they provide no real value to everyday retail investors that StockBet aims to optimize for and where we see significant opportunity. Uh, right now, we're charging the fixed fee of 4.2% while we're still in alpha. We've been alpha testing with a few users to improve and on the product, during which we've had 20k in trading volume, 1.3k transactions, 100 in revenue, all this from 40 alpha users, 10 DA use, and zero marketing spend. To summarize, we're running StockBet, a binary options exchange where retail investors can trade directly on market outcomes. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you there, Toby. Uh, we will move on now to Chloe. I'm gonna go ahead and share your screen here, Chloe. Awesome, we can see it. I can't hear you yet. Okay, you can hear me now. Yep, you got it. You got two minutes as well. Ready, go. Hi, I'm Chloe, co-founding Synchronized and making meeting coordination effortless. Meet Susan, a busy founder. She doesn't use any calendar platform that shows her availability because she works in healthcare. She looks through calendars, Google's time zones and places holds. Susan's colleague recommends Synchronize because unlike traditional calendars, it is effortless, and unlike sending a link with time slots, it is private for everyone. After 10 minutes onboarding, Susan scheduled an important sales meeting by marking it as high priority and specifying that it needed to happen last week. She never looked at her calendar. Synchronize sent her meeting attendants each a link so that they could choose their own priorities. John chose high. Jane chose the best time for her out of the few best times for Susan and John because she did not sync her calendar with her algorithm. We make scheduling frictionless, regardless of any attendees' comfort level linking their calendar to our service. Synchronize populates everyone's calendar with a meeting, protecting the information that they input it. Our proprietary algorithm developed to replicate and improve professional scheduling processes coordinates everyone's schedules. People seek our solution because there are many tools on the market, but none focus on scheduling on behalf of everyone's priorities, protecting users' privacies, and rescheduling automatically. Synchronized resonates. To date, there are 91 professionals on our waitlist, mostly via organic inbound from social media. One person on our waitlist said that Synchronized feels like a tech solution to a social cultural communication problem. We will offer professional team and enterprise subscription plans. Our go-to-market strategy leverages referrals to incentivize existing users to add their networks to our software. We will establish our technology and build our user base, offering a team's plan next year, hitting 10 million ARR in 2025 and focusing on enterprise contracts beginning in 2026. When Molly and I scheduled professionally, there was no software in the market satisfying the privacy and etiquette guidelines our roles required. We came together to build it. So this is synchronized, making meeting coordination effortless. Awesome. Thank you there, Chloe. Nice job. And we'll go to Perrin here with our sixth from this group. Perfect, just sharing right now. Excellent, thanks Perrin, I can hear you. Just wait, here it comes. There we go, you I can see, see it. Yep. Perfect. Two minutes, ready, go. Hi, I'm Perrin, founder of Eater Club. We're a curated community and warehouse for restaurants, vendors, and consumers. Meet Sid, sustainable purveyor and one of our customers. He needs a way to sell to independent restaurants without leaving his office, factory, or farm. Independent restaurants are the most difficult to reach and make up 70% of the marketplace. That's why Sid turned to Eater Club, where we can help tell his story, sample his products, and ultimately help sell them. How do we do it? Through virtual showrooming, which is about story and sampling as a service. Stories about creating original business and consumer content to bring these products to life is more than photos or text on a page. Sampling as a service is about curating the right products directly into stakeholders' hands so they can try before they buy. And the curated warehouse is about making it easy for them to make a purchase. 
Vendors pay $14.99 to join. They get virtual showrooming, sampling as a service, and we host exclusive vendor content that's available for restaurants with every purchase. We have three paid vendors signed up already, 18 in our pipeline, and two ready to sign up any day. We're a fully licensed importer and distributor ready to bring in exclusive organic, natural, and sustainable spirits, beers, and wines from around the world to give us a competitive advantage. Beyond that, Eater Club is the only warehouse 100% focused on curation, 100% focused on organic, natural, and sustainable products, and 100% content first, allowing us to target the independent restaurateur as well as the virtual content. Concept. Community is not only the bedrock in which we serve, it's also an organic restaurant and vendor discovery engine and exactly how we found Sid, one of our customers. We also support Sid through great industry conversations, helping him grow and scale his business in addition to training and other business programming to help move products. We have a go-to-market strategy that gets us outside of California within 18 months and a clear product roadmap that includes 300 plus SKUs to get to our revenue targets. The market opportunity is quite large with a million plus serviceable business, 70% of which are independent operators, extremely difficult to reach and are underserved. We have a team clearly ready to bring this. In. Oh, uh, we have a clear path to 10 and $100 million in revenue from the marketplace alone, and a team ready to bring this to fruition with our unique background in operations, creative community curation, as well as the creative side. We're Eater Club, a curated community and warehouse for restaurants, vendors, and consumers. Excellent. Nice job there, right. Karen. There it is, Jason. There. You can feel free to give an honorable mention in this one, and then you're two and you're one. We saw Sherlock uh, matching consumers with their best credit cards. Butler, an app that lets you keep track of recommendations. Think goodly, Goodreads for all media. We had Fetch with an X, uh, a shopping search engine, Stylus as a service. We had Stock Bet, which is a betting exchange that lets you simply bet on yes, no questions. Like, will Netflix be trading higher or lower next week? We had Synchronize, uh, which allows you to coordinate meetings privately, perhaps like Doodle uh, or Calendarly. Um, and then our final and 16th company of the night, done in an incredibly efficient uh, fashion here. Really great job, Charlie, uh, moderating. Eater Club, which is a sampling service for vendors to court new restaurant buyers. And it targets independent restaurants and organic foods, if I my notes are correct. I always like to take notes when I'm meeting with the startup. So let's start with Mike first this time. I don't think Mike got to go first yet. Mike, uh, I know Eater Club is your number one. You love food and restaurants. So tell well, me your my honorable time. mention is Sherlock because you know how much I love to use my frugal flyer points. Oh, yes, he does. I I, I've, you and I have had long conversations about this. There's a personal interest in that. But my number two is Butler. That's uh -huh. also a personal issue for me. That's something I struggle with, keeping the recommendations and tracking all the things that you watch. So I thought uh, I liked his little, his little plug for the Olin podcast, too. That was nice. Uh, but my number one is Stockbet. Ah. I was fascinated by the idea of simplifying options trading, which is very complicated. Um, if you have an idea about the direction of the stock, it's not so easy to translate that into an options play. And I thought they could do for options what Robinhood did for investing. So they're my number one, really fascinated by this. It's a really big, audacious idea. If they pull it off, um, I think it could be amazing uh, okay. in that category. Molly, what do you got for your... Three, two, one. Honorable mention, and your two and your. Uh, my honorable, my honorable mention is fetch because I like the concept, and also make fetch happen. Mm -hmm. All the points for that, Talisha. Um, uh, my number two, even though I have reservations a little bit, is stock bet mm -hmm. because I'm with Mike in that this is a great opportunity for retail investors, even though I fear the <laughs> unintended consequences of making it so easy and so addictive. Um, so I'm a little morally torn on this, but great idea. And then my number one is Sherlock all mm -hmm. the way. I mean, I literally like the first thing I typed was I effing love this. I want it. Mm -hmm. I want it. All right. And, uh, Jackie. Yes. Boy, this was a tough one. Also, um, mm -hmm. my honorable mention actually is uh, synchronized, um, because the, um, the scheduling thing continues to be painful. So if that worked, that would be pretty cool. Um, my number two is uh, stock bet. Hmm. It just seemed um, it's it's like sort of too dangerous not to vote for. Um, and my number one is Butler. Okay. And remember, I'm going to ask you for your two and one. Your two and one uh, through the lens of which ones would do best in an accelerator to get that million dollar seed round, which really a lot of founders tell me is like founders at this stage tell me is their goal. Uh, this last group, pretty hard to get through. Uh, and uh, my number one is stock bet. Um, it seemed like a great interface, great idea, super simple. I have no problem with people gambling. I think it's great for people to place bets and make hard decisions in life. 
Uh, and if some people have a problem with that, yeah, it's, you know, in terms of like they can't control their gambling urges, uh, welcome to the club. Um, and number two, I had a really hard time here. Uh, and, you know, for me, my heart's in Butler, uh, but I thought Eater Club had something very interesting about it in terms of um, it felt like the founder really understood their market. And although I normally wouldn't pick something like this, I think there might be something here to a marketplace that connects vendors, like-minded vendors in restaurants. I'm not sure about narrowing the focus too much, but there is something there to, to helping them connect with each other and make great experiences for everybody. So Butler will be my runner up. Eater Club will be my number two and StockBet will be my number one. And then moving on, Who's ready to tell me they're two and one overall? Who's ready to tell me they're two and one overall? I'm willing to go. Okay, go so, ahead. So uh, my number two is StockBet, and my number one is TimeWell. I think your, when you just said that they could create a new format, that really resonated with me, and I think um, there's, not, there's a huge opportunity in both those companies. Uh, okay. Jackie. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, Jackie has a big heart. She's rooting for everybody. When I do this to her, she hates it. That's I know because they're, her to they're do all it. they're all my children. Not you, you're you're Charlie's children, but hopefully I'll come to the accelerator and I will love you all equally. So don't hold this against me. I will love you all because <laughs> I want every single one of you to be there. I will also love you equally based on performance. Go ahead. That's true. Um, okay, so I think that um, you can do it, Jackie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go with taco for my number two. Okay. Um, and my number one is Butler. Okay. Well done. Molly. Difficult. I know, but we make hard decisions uh, here and uh, placing bets isn't easy as a capital allocator two and one. That's true. Um, I have three listed here and it's killing me. Mm -hmm. I, my number two, I mean, shout out to Sherlock. I can't wait to pay for that. However, my number two is term payments. I really think that that identifies a big space that can be disrupted that people are not thinking about. It's just a very creative and real issue to solve. And then my number one, because this is what a nerd I am, is innocuous AI. There's not a startup in the world who is not trying to build AI. And the idea that you can make that simpler and, and enable companies to like build this incredible feature in with small teams, I think is a winner. Uh, fantastic. Um, I had a similar, uh, cohort to Mike, which was stock bet and time. Well, time well is a consumer product stock bet is a consumer finance product, but, you know, kind of makes it more enterprisey, I guess, you know, more professional money at stake. So FinTech tends to do better. FinTech tends to get more investment. FinTech tends to get bigger valuation. So the criteria I set was which one would do best in an accelerator. And I think it would be number one uh, stock bet, number two time. Well, again, this new format, people love consumer stuff when it actually hits a nerve and is unique. So this is the weird thing about consumer. If it hits something and people feel it's novel, they haven't seen it before, they tend to give it a little more credit. And I think that's what time well uh, represents for me. I think other people would uh, feel that too, but StockBet feels like it's the closest to getting to a million users spending, you know, 10 bucks, 25 bucks a month for a membership or whatever fees, 4.20%, ironically. Um, yeah, so great job, everybody. Uh, let's take a moment for everybody to unmute and give a rousing set of claps and snaps to the one the only, the man who made it all happen. Not me, Charlie Cuddy. Woo! Woo Thank you, Charlie. Nice Charlie's the go. Oh, Charlie. Charlie. Here, Charlie, raise. Thank you, Very Charlie. Company. Can, cannot wait uh, to spend more time with each of you. We'll be in touch and get to know our team members. And uh, entrepreneurship is really hard. But as you can see, it gets a lot easier when you got a tribe and you got a group of people you can do it with. So keep building that tribe and... Uh, keep uh, helping each other. You know, you all get there together. Nobody gets there alone and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Amazing job. Great job. Three